We are reminding each other there are some principles of our Christian walk with the Lord. There are things that are practices that we need to practice, not once, not twice, but we practice them every day. We practice them every day. The last time I was here, we talked about fellowship. Was it fellowship or the word? Whichever. Today, we want to remind each other about another discipline called prayer. Prayer. Reminding each other. Maomi. Um, the reason why I think this is critical for all of us is because in our mind we have people we call intercessors so we think they should be praying but all of us are called to pray the call of God to each one of us is to pray thank God for intercessors who can take a little few days to intercede but all of us are called to intercede um, intercessors are okay. Prophets are okay. Pastors are okay. But I am a Christian. I have a responsibility. I was seated there, I, I thought, have you ever got bored by eating ugali? Me, I have not. And I'll tell you why I'm not bored by eating ugali. Because with the ugali, you can mix it with anything. So why should I get bored? I eat it with beans, right? Sometimes I change it with the dengu, right? Sometimes I take the same unga, put some bluebird, yes? Sometimes take the same unga, mix it with mihogo, yes? How can I get bored? You can eat ugali every day and never get bored. Why do you get bored to pray? Why? It's because you don't mix it with anything. You repeat the same story, then you would. If you eat the same ugali, nambosho, the same day, every day, bosho, 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 by the time you get bored. There are some of us who, because lunch, was only Githeri every day for three months. Some of us don't want to, to, to see Githeri today because it was cooked the same way, prepared the same way. You knew how it was going to test, so it bored us. But you can eat Githeri in your own house today, every day. Naeka karat, naeka waru, unakima na marigo, Santi Santa Vashwana and his idea. So you can enjoy uh, Gideri for, 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 for a long time. And the same thing then is true for me as a Christian. Prayer, as I remind, we remind each other, it is something that should excite us. Because it is not only a discipline that I can discipline myself with, but it is also a source of my connecting with my God. When I look at the Old Testament myself, I see some guys that really took time to pray or have to be with the presence of the Lord. One of them is Moses, that he appeared before the Lord many times until his countenance changed. In other words, as I keep on praying, my life should change. I mean, the things that I believed before, because of my constant fellowship with the Lord, my life should change. Actually, my language should change. If I still carry the same language, there's something wrong about my prayers. I cannot pray God to deliver me from poverty and I still talk about it. No, 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 no. There must be something wrong. I will wake up because I have prayed. Leave it to God for God to handle it and my language changes. We want to remind each other. The second service I tried to preach but I couldn't because I had more notes than time. And I can see the same, the same challenge will happen. 
but I will try this time to be a little bit relaxed by the time I finish. Usije ukamaliza na na uzito. Prayer is important. Prayer is important. Not the prayer that I used to pray in high school, blessed, bless it, and we would eat ugali and leave. By the time I'm praying and I'm leading prayer up there saying, bless it, bless it, and the boys say, amen. Some start walking out. When he gets to the door, he is finished. He throws the plate. The plates were good ones. They were plastic. You just throw the plates. Somebody to pick it from there. Not that kind of prayer. After all, I was asking myself, some of you older guys, eh, Karugano, some of you older guys, why we used to pray for food and pray after we finish eating? What happened? Now we pray once, and by the time we finish, nobody is concerned. And my father would lead us to pray for food, and when we finish, we thank God that it went on well. We, we enjoyed it. Nowadays, blessed, blessed, Amen once for all. And we can justify it. Prayer. When we pray, it is not that we are praying because we have need, because that's the other problem. Why do we want to pray? We pray when there is need. This country is made up of prayer for people. Oh, I tell you. If there are people who pray are you, you pray a lot. When there is problems, we pray a lot. But we, we are supposed to pray even the problem, when the problem has been sorted out. Salimia jirani yako mwambi. We jirani, wacha kuwamba maombi ya darula. Emergency all the time. Emergency all the time. This generation called G, Gen Z. They are here. They have come to occupy. Do you want to pray when they are on the streets again? Pray always. If they did it once, now we need to pray always. No, there were problems. And actually, they called some of us names that fit us. Fearful. Say Todd. Said you independent boys. Because when we want the independence, we, we live okay. But they made us aware that there are problems. But let us not wait until there is. Some of us, actually, you guys have helped us. In Kenya, we used to pray, and some of you would remember. 92, we prayed, didn't we? What was happening? There were, after election, there was some war somewhere in Molo, right? 97, we prayed. What was happening? There was problems. 202, we prayed. Why? There were problems. 207 and 208, we prayed. Why? There was problems. 2013, we prayed. Why? There was problems. 2017, is it 2017? We prayed. Why? There were problems. 2022, we prayed. Why? There is a problem. Why can't we arise and say 2027, we are not praying. We we'll start praying now. Because actually the pattern is the same. God is telling us something. Must somebody die for us to wake up and... You know, I used to tell people in this church, depending on where there is war, those people in this church will pray with the trembling. Hey, give them a mic. Give them a mic when they are the ones being attacked. That prayer, whoo, you feel like it is reaching heaven without any challenge. But the others are watching them. But I normally say this. The, if this country burns, by the way, that's not my sermon. If this country burns, it will burn for you and for me. Really? Really? Sasa ninasema hizo zote kwa nini? Hebu tukumbushane tu prayer is important. 
Prayer is not something we should only do at a church or during a Bible study or prayer day on Monday. But prayer should be there. It's something we should do every single day. It's like any relationship. If you don't spend time with that person, the relationship will suffer. So therefore, prayer is a way for us to spend time with God. It is a way to connect with him. It is a way to align our thoughts with his thoughts. When we pray, we are inviting God into our lives and asking for his guidance. We need him. And that's what the worship team was trying to remind us. We need him. And there is no one like him. We need him. But you see, prayer, the other thing that I've known over the years, let's remind each other. Prayer, even if you are taught to pray, unless you pray, you never learn it. Prayer is praying. Prayer is praying. And, number, and, and somebody said this, which is true. That you can, uh, you can look at your life and ask yourself, if I have prayed, has these things happened? Has that prayer changed me? Am I better than I used? Because prayer will change you. The second thing is uh, if I have prayed, are the things that I have prayed for, have they changed? Because prayer changes things. I have to get to that level. I have to get to that point where I know when I pray <laughs> that God will answer so that I can have faith in him and trust him. Now, because prayer is such a huge, a huge topic, I'm just scratching the service. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, omba. Now, I don't know how to pray. 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 Pray is just telling, Lord God, I need you. Come into my life. Come into my family. Come into my situation. And any one of us can say that. Of course, some of us can pray for hours. Thank God for those that can pray for hours. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter number 6, the disciples of Jesus goes to him and they ask him, because they had observed the disciples of John. So they're asking Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. And it is very interesting. The lesson was, when you pray. Oh, teach us how to pray, but the Lord is telling them, you start praying, but when you do it. The example that he gives us in the, in, in, in the prayer, our Lord's prayer. By the way, the Lord's prayer is a model. But I know there are some of us who all what we pray is that one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will. Be done. Amen. You think you have prayed. You have not. All what you have said is that this is the pattern of prayer. I have finished the pattern. Now you, start, you need to start praying according to the pattern. In this pattern, I find about a few things. Actually, if you look at it, you would have 10 or 12, but you can break it into many. But in this prayer, I find a couple of things that I think are very critical for me when I pray. I need to learn. I need to be reminded. And I want to remind you the first thing that I think that prayer in verse 5 and 6 of Matthew chapter 6, 5 and 6, it is starts by saying, and when thou prayest, because you have to do it, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in, and in the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Because they want to be seen by men, therefore men see them, therefore they are rewarded. Verse number six. Listen to this. 
But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, don't pray before you shut the door. Pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which he sees in secret then will give you a reward. The first group is rewarded by people. But the second one is rewarded by God. I want the reward from God, don't you? So I don't want to pray for others to see me. I want to pray so that God can hear me. And no wonder the Bible says you need to shut out. Shutting out. You shut everybody out. You get yourself to a place where there are no disturbance. Pray without your, telephone, your phone. Don't tell me you're going to pray when you're watching Arsenal. And they played yesterday. And, and then you're praying. And occasionally you're saying, hey, phone, you know. No, you cannot pray when you're watching wrestling. Because one time you are saying, Kufa, Kufa, Uwa, Uwa. You can't do that. So you have to shut out. Shutting out is closing everything out, closing everybody out, every situation out, and then you close yourself so that it is you and God. Do you get that? So the first thing that I need, and Jesus is the one giving us this pattern. He's telling us, when you pray, go pray. But when you pray, shut out. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need to shut out. Do you know even here when we are praying, you lift up your hand and we are praying, there are some very good things that are coming. Actually, when you close your eyes to pray, that is the time that everything good, not bad, good. Yeah, good, good things. They start coming to you, for example. Good things, huh? I want to tell you about good things. That brother that you have been wondering what was his name. It comes. I'm telling you. So, now that you know his name, the next thing is to check in the phone whether you have his number. So, so when you check the number, the next thing to do is to put it under priority. When I finish, I'll talk to him. Then you put it down. Then you lift up your hand. Then you, you know, you are saying, oh God, I thank you for my, before you finish my, another thought comes. Do you know Friday you never close the office? The door of your, ukufunga. So what are you going to do? The first thing is again to check the phone and see whether there is anybody you can call or text. No wonder the Lord is saying, when you do what? You pray, shut out. Why we take you to the encounter without telephones? It's because we know they will, they will, they will take you away. There is a brother we took to the encounter. He had three phones. Three He's a businessman. Three. So when we were taking the phone, he was wondering, now what will happen with my business? People will call. What will happen? We told him, let them, let them call. After the encounter on Sunday, he checked whether people had called. None had called. <laughs> Actually, I... I I hope you are understanding what I'm saying. If you want to really pray, shut out everybody and shut yourself in somewhere. Be there. For some of us, to shut out is just to be home, hanging around home. Because once you take off, the voice will be keeping telling you, and so on. Go, 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 go. You go the whole day, you have no time to, to intercede. So, the first thing that the Lord is telling us, and we are reminding each other, please go and shut yourself. The reason why Jesus is saying this is because if I don't, then what I'll be doing will be a show-off. 
It will be a performance. Do you know many times we even perform in church? We ask you to pray and you perform. You use all the vows and the these and the so on. You perform. And then we go saying, that English. Did you hear that English? Ooh, that was heavy English. Let me tell you the truth. That one you receive your own reward. And God does not hear. But you have impressed me. I will both say, ah, yo kizungu yake. It's Queen's English. You know, I told the first service, me, I know Kikuyu very well. I can read it, interpret, and translate. But one time, I thought I will impress the team that I'd gone with mission with and the church that I was, we were going to minister. How many people here met a muzungu either as a priest or a vicar or a mutugatiri in your church? You met a muzungu. Anybody who met a muzungu in their church? Thank you, thank you. Not this one. <laughs> Not this one. Not this muzungu. You know, Eh, Riu ni ukiwe eh, andu a uh, mukuruene ne makoragwa na dhina muno. <laughs> because you are trying to twine. But that is a mzungu. So I thought I would read with the kiuzungu to prove that I was there when there was ungus were our priests and vicars. And I tried a sentence. Can you believe me? I was not missing the words, but I was missing the tone. So I would say, the kerai. <laughs> then I'll try again. I will not finish a verse. Until one sister stood up and said, Come on, you are pastor, sit back. <laughs> and she read without an accent, with a kikuyu from Mokoroine. I'm saying, and I hope you hear, please don't perform in your prayer. Oh, pray. You know, may Kenoti live forever, right? Anybody who remember Kenoti? His wife, of course, his wife is here. <laughs> Do you know, every time we called him for prayer in front to be prayed for, those ministry team that used to pray for him, He will tell you, let's not pray in English. Let's pray in the language that you can express yourself. And he would explain to him, for me, Morungu. So if you are not from Mero, Morungu, you might think it is Urungu. But Morungu, he would call Morungu and Morungu would come. He would say, my prayer in Kemeru are faster. They are answered well. The point is this. Because I'm not performing, I want God to do what I've asked him to do, then I will not impress myself even. Because if I do, I get a reward. They are there. They are there. People will say, oh, did you hear the Swahili uh, Bishop Kimani heard? That was a very good Swahili. Do you, <laughs> God, 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 tell your neighbor, neighbor, Please don't perform when you are praying. Some of you are performing over your wife and children. They know you. Don't perform. Pray. Do you want to learn how to pray? Pray it. Asangai. Go in Kikamba properly where there is no what. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, when I go to preach in those churches. I read Kikuyu the way Kikuyu is. With those to Turumo up, you read them. Because if you want to read like an English person, you withdraw them so that you can read that way. But if you have those things, you read Kikuyu, that is Kikuyu. So what are we saying? The pattern that the Lord is teaching us is number one, as we pray, 
we we know that god is it is my audience it is me and him so the first point is my uh, audience of one it is me and him of course there is a community when we pray as communal we can pray but jesus is like first of all before we get to that community he wants you so he's saying when you go do it secondly and that is verse 5 and 6 secondly he says this in verse 9 he says this after this manner now after that manner after he had told you how to behave and what to do now he tells you now that you are ready now now that you are ready do this our father which art in heaven he is introducing somebody we don't pray to nobody we are praying to somebody we are praying to a person we Paul normally, Paul would say, as I pray in the spirit, I want to pray with understanding also because I'm praying, I'm talking to somebody. And when you're talking to somebody, you need to pause so that this somebody can also respond. So it is not blah, 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 amen, and then you go. No, 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 no. You don't give the whole list of the things you want and when you finish you go you need to sit around because it is com you are communing you are fellowshipping with all so he is introducing introducing the second thing that you need to know we are talking to our father our father who is in heaven i need to know where is my father in karatega korino no is he a kenya no is he a kikuyu no i'm talking to my father who is where? In heaven. The struggle that I have here is because I have refused, first of all, to know I'm a Christian, then Kikuyu next. I have put Kikuyu first, Christian second, and if I'm not careful, God might be third. But I need to change order. I want me to be a Christian first with the Father, my heavenly Father. So as I pray, where am I praying? And I, again I say this. As you pray if you are not careful again. There is like a voice that will tell you. You want to believe God. But they will start telling you. Have you seen your MCA? You know your MP can help you. That's why shouting is important. Because there will be all those voices. Have you seen this? Do they know who you are? Do they know you know the president? Do they know the president visited Zimmerman? Do they know that? Do they have an idea? You want to impress who? My father, where are you? You are in heaven. I want to address my father. And tell your neighbor, neighbor, though God is mighty and God is powerful, imagine he's my father. So when I go to God, there are some languages that I need to be careful about. You know, I know some of you are good at God's name. So you don't go there. Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Jire, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Eshkadu, Jehovah. Please, please, he is your father. <laughs> he is your father. If I was the president, if I was the president of this country, and I'm not, I'm not longing for. So don't keep your vote for me. Please don't. Oh, that is not a very good example because I don't dream about it. But there's a lady that is called Margaret Thatcher. Can you remember somebody called Margaret Thatcher? Margaret Thatcher was an iron lady because she was fighting at Falklands with Argentina. <laughs> Some of you did not know that. Eh? Yeah, that lady from England. England is too small as a nation, but so powerful. Too powerful that it colonized Kenya, Uganda, 
Tanzania, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, United States, Canada, Australia. I can't. Do you know it? I see. Can you imagine? So it has gone to fight Falklands with all it it has things. Now that is to tell you that I know a little history. It's not the point. The point is, with that powerful lady, every time she went back home, it is recorded. She put off the gown of the prime minister and put on the garment of a wife of Mr. Thatcher and a mother to her children. Why my father? Why, why idea of the father, the Lord brings it here? Because if he is my father, let's say, again, let me go back to that which one was not correct. Eh? That my father is the president of this country. Do you know if he is my father? He is your president, but he is my father. Which means, if I am like three, four, five, six, seven years old, 10, 11, those guys that uh, really, they know who their father is. You know, they say their father, my father is strong, so mighty, he can kill your father, he can destroy your father. <laughs> you, know, you know that? This boy, when there is a need, he will go to his father, whether he is in the bedroom, and you cannot. That is what Jesus is trying to say. This is your father. You can go to him anytime, anywhere, any moment. And although he is in heaven, and though he is big, his love for you is so big that where he has kept you, nothing can happen to you. You cannot grow a, through a crack. There is no mouse that can go through a crack. Why? Because of his love towards you. Oh, may God help me to know when I'm praying, I'm praying to my father. Now, usinione vibaya, omba kwa baba yako. I mean, why unanione vibaya, my father? I went and asked him for this. Why don't you ask your father? Yeah. I asked for, <laughs> you know, the biggest problem of what wa mezaliwa pamoja, children, together, is that they all think one is favored. Favor. Favor is not there. But these children go to us different things. And they are given different things. Kuna moja anaweza itisha baskiri. Na mungine itile doll. Cost ya doll. Na cost ya baskiri. Can you imagine? So you cannot complain that you say, No, you bought him a bicycle. No, you asked for a doll. He asked for a bicycle. There are people here, oh my God, may God help you and help me. When I go to my father, I will ask that which I know my father can give, my father can provide. So we remind ourselves, we are praying to our father. Where is he? He is in heaven. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are talking to our father. We can approach him. You can go to where he is. Whether he is in the bedroom, we can go there. So that we can get that which he wants to give to us. Number three in verse number 10. This is a pattern that the Lord is giving us. But we can learn and pick something there. Verse number 10. He says this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. The point is. And what this is Jesus is telling his disciples. When you pray. Pray that your will will align itself with the will of God. Did you know for miracles to happen, it has to be right. You have to be in the right place. Your mind must be right. Your attitude must be right. You must be aligning yourself with the purposes of God. No wonder there are some of us that pray, but we are not aligned, so we don't get nothing. Others pray and they align and they get something. Your will, Heavenly Father, May it align with my will here. May it please you. No wonder some of the things that you pray for, because they're not in the will of God, that don't happen. 
May God help us to pray those things that are at the will of God. Because God wants to bless me. I need to know with what. So that as I pray, I will not miss what God has for me. We remind each other. Yes, we are praying that it will align ourselves. Two things are clear from this, uh, this, this petition in this verse. That God has a clear will for our lives. And for mankind. And all what we need, number two, is to make that request to the heavens so that God's will and our will can align itself, that God can clear me from rebellion, but perfect that which concerns me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number four of that prayer is in verse number 11. Lesson number four, we pick it from here, another point. We must rely on God for whatever we need every day. Verse number 10 says, and this is the point that he is he's bringing to us, that unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain, unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain, Psalms 127, 7. So to ask God for bread then acknowledges that we are needy creatures that rely on him every day. Every day we need him. So bread here was sustenance for the people in, in, in Israel that time. So today I need God to give me my daily needs, my daily bread, the things that I need from him. May God supply them to me. So I must realize in my prayer, as I approach him, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. I say again, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. You know, it reminds me of a sister who went to get uh, driving lessons in 1982. 80, 84. 40 years ago. And the traffic, I don't know whether they still do driving here at Raraka, I don't know. They still do, eh? They, no. Thank you. No, no, they don't. Engineer tells you they don't. They used to do. Me, I failed four times. But I was still carrying passengers from Banana <laughs> to industrial area. Mm. But I failed four times. Every time I failed, the instructor would, would not take me to drive. I was waiting for them to give me that steering. I take them through the city. But four times they didn't. No, three times they didn't. The fourth one, when they did, it was because the table was so many people. So they said, let's go fast on the road. I carried the, the chief inspector. When we got to Pangani, he said, you have already passed. And I was, this is our two, that, uh, something. So he tells me to balance on the road. And I do balance on the hill. So he says, ah, wewe. I said, that's for another day. <laughs> so anyway. I failed a couple of times. Yeah, I failed three times. The fourth one, I did not even do the table. Because every time they would say, you have stepped on the flowers. You have hit the pavement. And I was square. <laughs> no, you have. Are you the one to tell me or I'm the one to tell you? So, and I haven't hit anything. But they would say, you have. You have hit the pavement. But this sister went. She had prayed in the morning. Me, I'm going for my driving lessons today. So she went, as usual, panic, anxiety. She starts the car, and those were the days, thank God for these days, those were the days that clutch na mafuta, lazima zikubaliane. They have to agree. If they don't agree, it goes off and it jumps. So my sister with anxiety, she stood, get into the car, she gets into the car, she's panicking, she starts, and then it stops. She did it three times. And then she stood, lady, for heaven's sake, you can see. She said, no, officer. Me, I came here for my driving lessons, and I cannot go without it. When she confessed those words, they agreed with her prayer in the morning. The shaking stopped. The balance came. She took it out of traffic police, and she got her driving lessons. That is the testimony of someone today. That, you know, if it is according to the will of God, and I know it, and I have faith in me, 
Nobody will stop me. I will go for it. My daily bread. What is your daily bread today? May God help me to know as I pray that I will petition him and tell him my daily bread. Remember what I said earlier? Remember as you talk about your daily bread, there will be voices that will tell you, Hata kama siyo mkate, siya kupatie mandazi. I mean, why should I go for mandazi and I wanted a mkate? I mean, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't go for anything less. Ah, mm. Mm. Don't exchange it. That lady got her driving license today. She drives in UK. And maybe she is hearing me as I preach. I'm talking about you, sister. Amen. Lakini sitaji jina, but I'm talking about you. And there are so many that are in UK, yeah? Yeah, so bless you. So we rely on God. Uh, another thing is that Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hebu tukubaliane. Tukubaliane nilikuwa nimekuambia ni ngapi? Eh, sasa kubali hizo nimekuambia eh, kwa sababu ni vizuri Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa sababu ni vizuri. Usiangalie saa lakini kwa sababu ni vizuri ni vizuri. Kwa sababu kuna mambo mengine nimeona ni vizuri ni kuambia maombi ufanya. Isn't it? So that I can finish. I let me those are the two you can talk to me privately or you can call book an appointment I'll continue the preaching in the office uh, and so on or uh, and so on. I <laughs> I'll do that. But I want to tell you when you pray what are you expecting God to do? Remember we, we, God uh, Jesus has given us that pattern. But when I pray what does prayer do for me? Prayer can help us focus on what is important. So as we pray, prayer can help us, our mind and everything, to keep on focusing on what is important. What is important? What is important? Secondly, prayer can help us to stay hopeful even when there are dark moments. Prayer helps us to stay hopeful even when we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. This generation Z, muliita nini? Gen Z. Poleni sana. Sio, si nyinyi watu wa nguvu sana. What did I want to say? We prayed. Tuliomba. <laughs> you know, one one parent, one parent called the daughter. Where are you? I'm in the city. Where? I'm in the city. What are you doing? We are here with the mini. <laughs> yeah. So the father pleaded. Musilale huko. Utafute njia ya kuja nyumba. Sijui alikuja saa ngapi. I don't know what time she got home. But we prayed. Why did we pray? I'll tell you wh- why we prayed. When the young people started, we all said there are our children. Do you remember that? Everybody would say my child is there. One MP said my daughter was there. But when hooligans joined them, nobody wanted to say their child was there. Nobody. Because, I want to ask, you have a gun. It is loaded. And these guys were officers. They were police officers, these two. You have a stone. They have guns loaded. You hit them with a stone. And you hit them where? Boop. Ask your neighbor, what would that officer do? Look for the stone which he does not know how to throw or look for the stone that he knows how to throw. So our prayer, (laughs) in a little while, we knew somebody was not telling us the truth. We knew somebody was not telling us the truth. The people that were killed in parliament, there are people that were not telling us the truth. There were people on the street. The people were not telling us the truth. So what did we do? We started praying and asking the young people, please, if you see them shoot, run away. Because as they shoot the enemy who are stealing, they will shoot you. That prayer was answered. Because the system agreed to change a few things. A few people went home. Don't, don't, you, don't put an argument there. Don't. You know, you know, somebody said this. The prayer that was prayed there was so powerful that Azimio was shaken. 
Today it is in the government. <laughs> no, seriously. The prayer that was prayed then was so powerful. As the meal was shaken, only my brother who is left alone saying, Bado Mapambano. Are you getting the point? God answers prayer, even at the darkest moment. Me, I'm a witness that God saved this country. The young people had no guns. The young people had no rungus. They were carrying what? Do you remember what they were carrying? So that when they come next to a police, they do what? A selfie. <laughs> so innocent. So innocent. And they tape the police, they talk and tape. They were having fun. And somebody was giving them water. The first two days, everybody was so amazed about these young people who are doing what we cannot do. So they were given water, water here, water there. But when we prayed so that our young people are not killed, because there are people who would kill you even before you throw the stone. We know that. And they would be said it was somebody breaking. So we prayed and God helped. And the young people that are in here, though you are occupying and you might greet me, that's okay. Uh, the point is, you agreed. And may God help Kenya. May God help Kenya. So when I pray and when you pray, there is a way that God will come through even when it is the darkest times. When we pray, prayer helps us to focus to focus, help us to connect to God on a deeper level. When we pray, prayer helps us to deal with difficult emotions and situations that are hard. When we pray, God help, gives us help, comfort, and gives us peace. When we pray, prayer helps us to develop a stronger relationship with God. Prayer helps us become more compassionate to other people. Prayer can give us strength during difficult times, prayer can help keep our minds and thoughts clear. Prayer. So when I pray those things, God will make sure they happen. Look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, we are reminding each other that it will be good for us to pray. Because prayer changes people and prayer changes things. Prayer will either change you or change your situation or both you and the situation in Jesus' name. I want to ask the worship team to come so that now we can do a number. We can pray. I told you prayer cannot be taught. All what you need is to start praying. Yeah, just start praying. Open your lips as you pray and pray to the Lord. Let God the Almighty do what only he can do because there are things only he can do. Hallelujah. Prayer changes things and prayer changes people. Make it a habit. Don't pray once. Pray every day. Have time to pray every day. It is not the many words. Again, I told you, don't impress him. He knows you. He is your father. Do you know if he is your father, he knows you? He knows you. He is your father. He knows you. I want to ask all of us to stand if we can. We do a hymn here. Because in this hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus, it just tells us, why we don't have it is because we don't pray. So we need to pray so that we can have it. Are there trials? Are there temptations? Are you having lack of this and lack of the other? Or what the singer is trying to tell us. Let's talk to our God and let's talk to God in prayer.